What's up everybody? Today we're going to talk about the Crossfire 2 2-7 by 32 crossbow scope. Now this scope is not like your average rifle scope. There are a lot of features built into it specific to crossbows. So if you are somebody out there looking to use a scope on your crossbow for hunting or recreational shooting and you want to be more accurate with it, this is a great option for you. If you're looking for something for your rifle, definitely check out some of our other videos on a few of our other products in the Crossfire 2 line as well. Now, what are some of those crossbow specific features? Well, first and foremost, inside of the scope is our XBR2 reticle, which has been specifically calibrated to help shooters of crossbows be accurate from 20 yards out to 100 yards, utilizing a 40 yard zero. Now the reticle inside this is a lot like a BDC reticle in your traditional rifle scope in that it gives you hash marks for different distances that line up hopefully with your particular arrow out of your crossbow. Now we know the FPS or feet per second figures of your crossbow arrow can vary greatly depending on the actual crossbow itself or a number of other factors. So we didn't want to make that only correlate to one particular FPS. Now we utilize the fact that this is a second focal plane reticle and its scale in relation to the image actually changes as you change magnification to our advantage in that each magnification you'll see indicated on the mag ring here correlates to a different FPS. And you'll do a little fine tuning of that when you do your sighting in and we'll have a video on that particular process for you to check out if you do get this scope for your crossbow. In the middle here on the turrets, the elevation and windage act just like your rifle scopes turrets in that they dial in half MOA increments. Then on the side here, we have our illumination dial. And the illumination is actually in red or green in this particular case. And you can choose that right here on the dial depending on which direction you spin it. Now when you get this crossbow scope to make it a more complete kit, it's gonna come with flip caps for the eyepiece and objective. It's gonna come with a neoprene scope cover to protect it when it's in storage and it's gonna come with rings to mount it right up on your crossbow so you don't even need to get anything else. This one scope has it all for you right out of the box. All right, everybody, that is the Crossfire 2 2 to 7 by 32 crossbow scope. Like we said, we'll have some other videos on the sight in process and how to use the reticle specifically. But if you have any other questions on this scope in particular, let us know in the comments below or hit us up on the phone, email, or social media. And until the next video, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Okay, where do I start? Uh, where do you start with a crossbow scope? In order to allow us to line it up with different SPF, F, SPF. Problem is that I, I start talking and I don't remember what I just said, so I don't know what I actually said there. Our Rangemaster Pro Scope comes standard on our top of the line bow collection and features a variable speed and arrow drop compensation setting for crossbows that shoot between 275 feet per second and 425 feet per second. No adjustment for distance is required. The configuration consists of three duplex crosshairs and five dots calibrated for 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 yards. The fourth and fifth dots are freestanding, situated just below the 40-yard crosshair. This scope is compact, lightweight, and is equipped with an etched glass reticle and fully multi-coated 1.5 to 5 power optics. The 8.25 inch scope features a 30 millimeter tube for heightened light gathering and durability. Before sighting in your crossbow, adjust the speed dial on the scope to match the advertised speed of your crossbow. Then sight the crossbow in at 20 yards using the top dot or line, making any windage and or elevation changes necessary. Fine tune your scope settings at the 40 yard dot or line or 50 yard freestanding dot using the scope's speed dial. If you're hitting high at the 40 or 50 yard distances, adjust the speed dial to a higher speed level. Or if you're hitting low, adjust the dial to a lower speed level.
is Peter and I'm here with Mark Ambrose from SA Sports and Mark what he's going to do is going to go over with us on how to set the scope. We already put the whole fever together and what we're going to do right now is just try to go explain a little to you uh, what to do the proper way to mount your scope on to your fever. So Mark give me a couple of hints here. Thanks Pete. First, um, you should have already watched the video on YouTube on the assembly process, so you should be pretty much to this point. Right. Have the fully assembled crossbow. So I we wanted to just go in a little more detail on what some of the things that might be affecting their, their shooting mm -hmm. and easy tips that can eliminate a lot of problems for people. So we'll expand on that. So the first thing that I would do is take a look at this setup right now. And you can see on here the scope base has got yeah, it's There's a an adjustment slanted. knob on here that if you're using a single crosshair scope, that's handy because you can click it and click it and change your yardage. Right off of that. Off of the scope. But with a multiple line scope with multiple yardages built in, you don't need to use that feature. So this one has got the scope pointing downward, which would make you shoot probably over the target at this point if you tried to shoot it right now. All right. So we're going to take this little knob here and just turn it keep turning it until it, you'll hear an audible click there you and go. that that popped into place so now your whole level now this base, base is level and what you do then is take your scope out you loosen the rings up both the sides and the clamps that hold it onto the weaver base and then you, there are multiple little slots on here that you can choose from right my personal preference is the front slot and the second one from the rear that gives okay. me the eye relief that I like. I can see the field of view without having to move my head back and forth a lot. It fits so, right into perfect. So it fits right in there. So And then what you want to do is leave these top rings loose, These the clamps on the top that hold the scope in place. Right. And in the meantime, then, you want to tighten down the clamps. To the base. To the base. And that's just using an Allen key. We'll just get them tight enough to hold it on there so we can make some further adjustments. Okay, so that's secured to the base now. And then after that, what you're going to want to do is <clears throat> more than likely the crosshairs inside the scope are not going to be level. They're going to be, because these are loose, it'll slide around and move. So you want to look through the scope, find the vertical line and the crosshairs, and just adjust it until it's at right. a level position with <clears throat> Perfect perpendicular lines. I mean, if you really want to go into detail a lot more, uh, be more precise on it, uh, what I've seen a lot of other guys do is uh, what we do in rifles and stuff like that is put our level on it. Yeah, what you would do is take take a small uh, bullet level, get some sandbags, put it on the track of the bow, Right. get the bow level, then secure that, then take that level and put it on the scope base, and there are two small adjuster screws on there that are recessed in the top of the weaver mount that you can use one of the allen keys that comes with it right to to finely tune it and get it perfectly level and then you can also lock it down and then so the knob won't move so at all. your base won't move at all everything then it'll be secure flat permanent if you don't want to adjust it up if you don't want to be able to use that adjustment knob so okay and once you do that then you go ahead and level up once you do that then you get the scope Crosshairs leveled, you tighten these rings all down. Right. And then you should be good to go. It's as simple as that. But it's very important to have a level starting point. Perfect. So we assembled the bow out here already. Um, got it pretty much. We just showed you how to do the, the scope mount on here. And I am going to take it out here now. We're going to sight it in. And after that, hopefully with uh, some luck, I get to shoot a turkey this afternoon. Yeah, it's turkey season here in Florida, so... And, uh, this bow's perfect for that job. We're going to be in a two-man blind, and this thing is small enough that we can both fit in there and do some filming. And perfect, perfect. So let's go ahead and um, take it to the let's range over here, sight it in, and uh, get it done. Okay. Okay, folks. We got our crossbow fully assembled. The previous step that we just finished was leveling out the scope base. We've got everything tightened down. Now we're ready to start target shooting and get this thing sighted in so we can go out and take a turkey. First thing you're going to want to do is remove the caps so that you'll be able to adjust the reticle inside the scope. These two caps come off. Put those in my pocket so I don't lose them. 
Um, second thing you're going to want to do and before you start shooting anytime is take some rail lube, put it on the center of the string serving, put it in there pretty, pretty liberally, and then just take your fingers and rub it in, work it in so it saturates that serving. This is going to, it's going to lubricate the rail as you're shooting without you having to keep reapplying so often. So every five or ten shots it's a good idea to put more on. Just rub it in until you can't see it anymore and you're ready to go. So now I'm going to take my rope cocking device, put my foot in the foot stirrup, take one of the hooks in each hand, spread them out, drape it across the back there, hook the hooks on each side of the string. Should resemble the shape of a W and as I, as I pull back that hook will move to the center and that keeps your, your string centered the same way every time. Because if you try to do with your hands, see how wide your hands are versus the width of that hook, you got a lot of room to play and it makes your shots a little bit erratic. Okay. So since we don't have a bench here, we're just going to use a shooting stick, like a little Y stick and a chair so that we have a uh, stable platform. Take my arrow, got the odd colored fletch, always put that down in the track. What that does is lines up that half moon knock with the string so that it cradles in the string. Put that in, slide it back. This bow is equipped with an automatic safety as well. So it's on safe now that I cocked it. So I'm gonna release the safety when I'm ready to shoot. Squeeze the trigger and that's pretty pretty good for just assembling the bow and taking the first shot. You can see the elevation on there. Since we leveled this scope out, the elevation, and this is 10 yards, is almost perfect. I don't know if we could get much better than that. So we're gonna uh, <clears throat> take our adjustment here it's got a little left indicator on it and since we shot a little bit to the right we're gonna click this probably about a quarter turn maybe a little more that should draw us over towards the bullseye and contrary to using this, this scope on a rifle those clicks you have to click it a lot more with a crossbow because the yardage is so close at a hundred yards each click would be a quarter inch so that's drawn in significantly when you're shooting only at 10 yards. Okay, we're ready for our second shot. We went and pulled that arrow just in case we don't we don't want to make sure we don't hit it. So we've got a little breeze here today, so it might take us a few shots to get it in. Maybe not too. That's about as good as you can get at a 10-yard shot on the second shot out of the box. So I'll pull that arrow down there and we'll duplicate that shot again. And if that's if we can duplicate that, we're ready to either move back to another yardage or take the yardages as they come with the reticles, which at 10 yards, you'll get about 17 and 25 for your three different lines that are inside the scope. Okay, we're gonna take our third shot. Hopefully this will be our final shot. Um, again, the auto safety came on, so I have to release the safety and get ready to take the shot. The, the turkeys that we're gonna be hunting, our blind is set up so that it should be about a 17 yard shot if they respond to what we've set up and that would indicate our second line in our crosshair so I'd say we're pretty well sighted in here so we're finished at this point hey folks finally made it out here as you can see we finally got the new USA Sport Fever crossbow all set up. As Mark was explaining, we set up the sight. We went ahead and uh, zeroed it in. Got it shooting at 15 and 20 yards, right on the money. So with any luck right now, we can get a turkey come in with what we want him to come into and with, with, with within range. And hopefully we can get the shot and get the kill. So let's get our stuff together and go.
a shot. Just, man, we just sighted this bow. We put it together last night. Mark sighted it in with me. And we went ahead and we made the shot. Oh my God. We were here about an hour. We were calling them. They kept hanging up out there. They wouldn't come in close to decoys. They were waiting for some other jakes to come in with them because they were chasing them around, trying to stay away from the hens. So once they got here, man, we got the shot. We made it. <laughs> this is great. Hey folks, well, it worked out as you can see. We went ahead and set up our blind the day before and we came out in the middle of the afternoon and uh, sun is blazing, you can see it was kind of hot. We set up, we hurried up in there, turkeys kept coming and going, coming and going. They came back and uh, they were doing little half struts here and there. They came in and uh, gave me the shot, arrow went right through them like that. Flipped over a couple times and fell right behind the bush over there. Went and picked them up. But man, this little bow right here, the, the SA Sports Fever crossbow, made his mark. I'm telling you. It's a lightweight, small, little compact bow. Great for turkey hunting. You can sit inside the blind there. He saw us inside there. It was two of us, me and the camera guy, inside a small blind list, and he still has enough room to shoot. And uh, here's the proof right here. Great turkey. Great Osceola turkey, we're here in South Florida, and uh, couldn't ask for any better. So let's go ahead and tag them, get them out of here, and get ready for our next hunt.